Hey guys, in this video I'm going to review this power station from EcoFlow Delta 2 version and the bifacial solar panel. I'm going to perform multiple tests for power station and solar panel. If you're interested in the review, let's jump into the video. Specification for this power station um, capacity is 1 kilowatt hour. For AC output you can get 1.8 kilowatts of continuous power and 2.7 kilowatts of surge power. For USB and accessory ports, I will attach a screenshot. You will see how many volts and watts you can draw from there. For AC input ports, how you can charge this station back. We can use wall charger, AC charger, uh, 1.2 kilowatts maximum. So that means we can recharge this station back in uh, less than one hour. We're going to test this. And uh, we can charge this from solar panels and the uh, car accessory port using 12 and 24 volts. For solar panel, we can charge with uh, uh, in, in the range of 11 to 60 volts with uh, 15 amps and maximum power we can charge is 500 uh, watts, which means we can recharge in two hours from solar panels. This is bifacial solar panel, 220 watts one side and uh, 155 watts other side. Solar panel is going with this case and the carbines and this case is going to help you to set up angle of the solar panel to get maximum power from the sun. Uh, in a solar panel on one side we have these MC4 connectors for positive and negative and additionally with the solar panel we're getting this extension cable. On one side we have MC4 connectors and on the other side we have XT60 connector which is going into this power station. And the uh, XT60 connector is super easy to find and make your own like extension uh, cables or with whatever cables you need to make for this power station, which is great to see this cable here. So the, for power station, on the primary side, we have this button to activate this and we have screen. Uh, on the screen, we can see information such as how many hours left uh, station to run with the current load, then percentage and the input and output in watts. Uh, additionally, here we have all USB ports with a separate button to activate this or deactivate this. On the side, on the left side of this station, we have additional port to connect additional battery if needed, so we can extend capacity for this power station. And uh, on the back, under this cover, we have uh, input ports. This is XT60 connector right here to this port. Uh, going solar panels or any other power supply such as a car cigarette lighter or something else and the AC input. Additionally, we have a resettable fuse right here. Then we have six outlets which is also can be activated or deactivated by separate button and then we have accessory port, 12 volts port. Uh, this is 8 amps maximum and then we have uh, two ports uh, 5521 with the 3 amps maximum. Uh, in the package with this station, we have uh, AC outlet cord, 5521 cord, and, uh, uh, and this plug, which is one accessory port, and the other side is XT60 connector. So we can use this cable to get power from station using right here, or we can charge the station. For example, I'm, I'm going to insert this into my car. And... Uh, now I can connect this to power station and when it's charging it shows how many watts we draw from a cigarette lighter. Right now we draw 80 watts. I guess if I'm going to start my truck it's going gonna, it's gonna to draw a little bit more. Then uh, it shows that it's going to take two hours to charge and current charging. So now at the same time when we're charging our battery we can connect some loads. For example right here is a battery Milwaukee battery charger. I can connect this to power station. and start charging our battery. And right here, we, we're gonna see that we are charging our station with 82 watts and we draw from a station 74 watts. So we can charge and discharge station at the same time, or we can connect more powerful loads, such as a heat gun. And uh, we can run powerful equipment in our truck without running generator. 
And now let's do quick test exceeding 1.8 kilowatts of power. Let's see how the station is going to behave. And before doing that, I want you to show one function that this uh, power station has. It calls X boost. And basically by default, it's turned on. We can switch this on or off in application. But uh, what it does, uh, if we exceed 1.8 kilowatts, power station will reduce its voltage and will still power devices that connect to this power station. If we disable this function, what's going to happen if we exceed 1.8 kilowatts? Uh, it's going to overload the station and it's, it will disconnect AC power. So right now this function is disabled and uh, let me turn heater. So we draw 1.1 uh, kilowatt from the station. Now I'm turning second heater and we draw 1.9 kilowatts. Voltage is still 120 volts. And now I'm going to turn this heater on a second mode. And we draw about 2.5 thousand for a second from this power station. We've got this overload sign and station is disconnected. So now I'm going to I'm going to open application and uh, enable Xboost feature and I'm going to show you how this works. All right, so this feature is enabled. We draw 1100 watts. I'm going to turn one heater on the first stage and uh, you can see that we draw one point, almost 1.8 kilowatts and voltage is reduced from 120 volts to 114. When I turn heater on the second stage, we still draw 1800 watts and voltage decreased to 99 volts. So instead of disconnecting AC loads, what station does it's, uh, with this feature is decreasing voltage but still powering our loads. So this is a great feature to keep your equipment running when uh, even if it's overloading your station. Now let's try to run heavy equipment from this power station. So right here is a 12 inch blade. And as you know, these motors require a lot of energy to start. So I'm going to connect this sore to power station. Right now we are at 67% and let's try to start this saw. All right. And uh, here's a four by six piece of lumber. Let's try to cut this. Now let's try to set up solar panel. We'll see how quickly we can get it done. All right, it took about two minutes to set up solar panel. Today is the middle of September, 2 p.m. And uh, right now we're getting 1.96 watts. So what is interesting, if I cover one quarter of the panel, 
we're gonna get 152 watts so we're still getting a lot of output if i'm going to do like that so we are getting 133 watts which is great so that means part of the panel can be shaded and you still and you still can get decent amount of power so let me try to close so i'm closing two panels out of four partially and uh, we're getting 110 watts which is great because usually solar panels if you know if you cover some part of solar panel it's shutting down the entire section so right here is a four independent section and if we cover two of them two still producing output so with the 200 watts for this uh, power station it can recharge in about five hours and right now from 64 percent to full charge is going to take about two hours Now I'm going to test capacity on AC side. I'm going to apply load 200 watts, which is 0.2C rating for this power station. Test should last about five hours. Let's come back after this time and we'll see what is the capacity for this power station. And uh, after four hours, 22 minutes, we've got 871 watt hour, which is 15% uh, loss DC to AC, which is standard for these power stations. And now let's test how much time it takes to fully charge this station from 0% to 100%. And the charging just finished, so it took 1 hour and uh, 29 minutes to fully charge this power station. And the next test I want to perform is to measure how many watt hours we can get from uh, accessory 12 volts port. So I'm going to connect this capacity meter, set this to uh, 10 amps to draw 120 watts and uh, then we'll come back and see how many watt hours we get. Here's the results next morning, power station at 0% and uh, we've got almost 74 amp hours. So efficiency is about 75%. And now I want to disassemble this station and see what is inside. To do that we need to remove this top plastic piece and then right there we have six bolts after unscrewing them we can remove top cover and we see all internal components and the next step we can remove all screws on the top then we're sliding back panel for this control on the right side we're sliding this up and uh, in the side and now we can uh, remove top cover and see where the BMS and how cells looks like right here we can see battery management system which is pretty large usually this size of power stations they have four cells to make 12 volts battery and for example if you want to pull 1800 watts uh, from power station that means we need to pull about 150 amps uh, through BMS and uh, from cells which is a lot in this power station they are using uh, cylindrical cells 16 cells that means we are reducing internal amperage by four times and um, these cells allowing better cooling when we charging or discharging using high amps. So now let's review application for this power station. We can connect to this power station via Bluetooth and then we can connect this power station to the internet. So right now it's connected to my local Wi-Fi network. You can see right here is a Wi-Fi icon. And um, when I press on uh, this power station, we can see right here is information about available time, how much time we can run this power station, uh, and then input and output. If we swipe on the right, right here we have uh, all information about output uh, for AC, 12 volts DC, and USB. We can turn all of them individually. And... Um, I can disconnect my uh, Bluetooth and I still can control this power station. So basically from anywhere because it's connected to Wi-Fi, which is actually a great option. 
So I just enable USB uh, charging uh, and uh, you can see I'm charging all my equipment including this laptop. And um, right here we're getting information on power station that we are using about 80, 77 watts right now. And in application we can see in the details how much power we're drawing from USB ports, USB A ports or USB C ports. So then if we're gonna go to settings, uh, we have uh, options to rename this power station, enable or disabling beeping when we're pressing any button. So then in the input section, we can control uh, how much power we want to use when we're charging our station. Uh, we can use full power, which is set by default to 1.2 kilowatts, or we can reduce it. It's gonna help to increase uh, lifetime for the batteries. Same for the car input, we can set how many amps we wanna, we wanna get from a car input. And then we have option for smart generator after on or off. I was not able to understand what this option means. I checked with customer support and when I'm gonna get reply, I'm, I'm gonna post this in the description. So then for output, we have this X boost feature. We can enable or disable this. Uh, then we can change frequency from 60 to 50 gears if needed. On the battery settings, we can set what is the charge and discharge level. So we can extend our battery life of course, by decreasing some usable capacity of the battery. And then we have all of these timeouts. On the other section, we have firmware. We can check what version we are running. Then we have help center. Here is gonna be like some information, so like FAQ section. And then we have specification. So right here is basically it's listed a specification for this power station. We don't have information how many times uh, we charge or discharge this um, uh, power station. And here's a quick review for this application. All right, guys, I did cover all information about this power station. I hope you did enjoy this review. Thank you for watching and see you later.